Hello people. Welcome to the mountains of Slovakia. It's a beautiful, beautiful region of the world. Guys in flip-flops on Harleys, kids on rollerblades. Look at it, isn't it lovely? The mountains in the distance, dear God. Look where we are. Oh. Well guys, I wanted to use this time. I got a long drive ahead of me. It's about four hours today. We're going to southern Poland. It's like the Alps of Poland. I wanted to use this time to kind of chat with you guys, let you guys know what's been going on, tell a few stories, show some nice scenery. I think it's going to be a good one, guys. So I've been on the road. I've been fucking sending it for like the last two weeks. I hung out in Ireland, the UK for a bit. For a long bit, actually. It was uh, almost two months in total. I was in the UK and Ireland. Bit too pricey, so I left. Came for some adventure here in Central and Eastern Europe. Some cheaper adventure. Oof, look at those mountains. But uh, yeah, it's been about two weeks. I've gone 1,700 miles, guys, in two weeks on a motorcycle. To me, that's a lot, dude. That's a lot. It's, it's been an exhausting journey. Each day I'm riding about 250 kilometers, so that's like 100 and something miles. I don't know, it doesn't sound like a lot, but on these back roads, these nice Slovakian communist roads, <laughs> it's, it, can, it can add up, you know, I get pretty tired. But yeah, I just wanted to give you guys some of my first impressions of like Europe and Western Europe, how it compares to Eastern Europe. Got some good stories for you guys. I'm sure that's why you clicked on this video. So dude, what I gotta say, man, about France is right away, I thought it was like cute how people don't speak English there. I thought I was like, oh, that's funny. Like it's right next to England, but no one knows, no one knows English. That's hilarious. And after about two days, it got really old. Like I'm fine. Like I'm in Slovakia now. Not many people speak English. I get it whatever they might not need it they don't go to they don't travel or whatever i got no beef with them but once i learned that like the french learn english in school and then i mean you guys have seen in one of my videos like i <laughs> the first place i went in france i asked this lady hey you speak english and she's like huh? like she didn't even know what i was saying when i said the word english it's just like that kind of stuff where I'm like, wait, but you learned this shit. Like as a kid, what are you talking about? Why are you acting so ignorant? You know what I mean? That was one of those things that it started off like cute and as funny and ironic. Oh wow, yeah, they're right next to England and no one speaks English. And then it got really fucking old, dude. Like nobody speaks it there, bro. Not even the kids, man. Like I was living in Japan, right? And People speak more English in Japan. I'm sorry, it's just true. And I'm sure people speak more English in China, or at least the cities. It's just crazy, bro. Like, the only place in, uh, in France where people spoke English is Paris. So, yeah, that's my beef with France, man. It's like, you gotta live right there, you all learn it as kids, and then, yeah, nobody speaks this. Like, what is going on? But yeah, you had a good time in France, man. I went to the Eiffel Tower, fucking hung out with these hot uh, Brazilian girls. Yeah, I had a good time, dude. It was a lot more fun than I expected. Um, you know what? I'll be honest. I was a shameless tourist in Western Europe. I don't give a fuck. I'm near the Eiffel Tower. Bitch, I'm going to see the Eiffel Tower. Sorry about it. You know what I mean? Is this recording? Oh, shit. Is this shit recording? Oh, my God. Wait. Okay. Are you recording? You're recording. All right. Here we go. Skirt. Yeah! Oh, oh, man. Anyways, what was I saying? Man, I'm in such a good mood. I'm in such a good mood. That guy is awesome. <laughs> this bike, bro, the, the horsepower got me a little high right now. <laughs> yeah, Germany, also, honestly, I was a little disappointed in Germany, man. And, you know, take that for what it's worth. I am a poor 20-something YouTuber, okay? I don't have money to blow, but if I had money to blow, I'd be blowing it in Germany, okay? But I don't. So it was not 
the best for me. It was too expensive. I really wanted to eat fucking schnitzel and sausages and fucking, you know what I mean? I wanted to do German things, tourist things. Couldn't, couldn't do it. It's fine, it's not for me. But now we're in Central Europe, we're in Slovakia, the former USSR, and life's good. I just got a large soda for 90 cents. They also, so, ah, fuck, he's a scooter. I just waited a scooter. He all, they also sold fucking lemonade for 40 cents. We're in, uh, we're in the third world, baby. I'm loving it. I missed it, man. It's been a while since I've been in like a, I don't know if you call this a developing country. I mean, it is the EU, but I don't know. It's not a lot of money. Whatever. It's been a while since I've been in a not American country, not a rich country. And uh, I realized uh, I, I kind of missed it, man. It's got a nice charm to it. You know? And Slovakia is cool because it's like a mix. It's like you got these nice roads, things are cheap. I don't know. It's Europe, but it's also poor. Best of both worlds. All right, we're in the mountains, guys. Look, the Tetra Mountains, Slovakian Polish border. Yeah, man, I'm really excited. I'm going to Poland today. I'm gonna stay in the mountains. I'm just gonna rest, bro. I just really need the rest. I've been sending it every day for the last two weeks. And truthfully, for the last month, ever since I left that job in Wales, I've just been going so hard, dude. I finished my last day of work, went to Stonehenge, went to Glastonbury. It was all very quick, <laughs> quick succession. London, Paris, it's just been, uh, life's been crazy. So it's gonna be nice to just kick it, get some work done, just chill, man. But dude, these last two weeks have been a hell of a ride, man. Like I said, I've gone 1,700 miles, dude. For me, that's a lot. In kilometers, I think it's like 2,600. Um, uh, it's been so much. Like, dude, it was funny because I started my plan. I started my route. I was like, yeah, I'll go from London to fucking uh, Warsaw, Poland. I can do that in a week. And I mapped it out and I was like, yeah, I got it. I got it. And once I started going, dude, with the heat, like Paris, London broke records for how hot they were. It's like over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. I think Paris was like 104. It's like 42 Celsius. Um, bike quit working. I had to stop. It's just been a lot of like learning as far as like pacing goes. I've had to be really patient with how I travel, man. Jesus, look at this. Uh, yeah, I mean, dude, obviously a motorcycle is not a jet airplane. You cannot just step on board of a vehicle and just step off and immediately fucking appear in a new place. A motorcycle forces you to be patient, man. And you have to earn it too. It's not just like buy your ticket, stand in line, fucking, you know. You have to earn it. God, this is nice. get down to business the moment we've all been waiting for I got robbed by a French prostitute by multiple French prostitutes so <laughs> I was gonna come on here and have a podcast about how I actually prefer hanging out with like low-income people on the fringes of society yada yada because they have like less pretensions which I still think is true I still think that's true I would rather hang out with poor people than rich people at least my time in Wales, you know, shout out my host family, they were great, but they were a little wealthy and like, we just didn't have a lot in common and they were kind of hard to talk to and stuff. And moral of the story is, I like hanging out with low income people on the fringes of society. You know, they're more fun, they have better stories. They're a little crazier. We have more in common. So I found myself in France. It's few, I don't know. I don't know how far it is outside of Paris. It's just some little town. It's called Meaux, France. 
and I get a B&B there. Things are going great. It's my last night. I'm gonna go to the river. It's really fucking hot. It was like over 100 Fahrenheit, right? Celsius, it was like 41 or something. It was ridiculously hot. And so I go cool off at the river, get a couple beers, I'm chilling there. And I go to jump in and I see these people there and they're kind of like grilling out, or not, they're, they're not grilling out, but they're having like a little picnic. They're drinking, they're smoking, they're having a good time, right? So I approach them, or no, I don't approach them. I think they approach me. And luckily one of them, literally one person out of the group spoke English. And you know, we're having a good time hanging out. And dude, within five minutes of meeting these people, two of these girls come up to me and they're like, we suck your dick, we suck your dick. <laughs> I'm not making this up, dude. I'm not making this up. They're like, yeah, we suck your dick, we suck your dick. <laughs> it's like the only English they do, bro. <laughs> it's the only English they do. We suck your dick. <laughs> and I didn't know what to say. Uh, to be honest, they didn't look great. They weren't the cutest girls. But, you know, <laughs> when someone is asking to suck your dick, you're not gonna say no. <laughs> Guys, I did not pay for French prostitutes, all right? I did not pay them. It didn't go down like that. It, this story is not what you think, okay? <laughs> Basically, we're hanging out, having a good time. We're smoke, or not, we're not smoking. That's illegal. We're drinking by the river. And, um, I got a little drunk. We go to jump off the bridge. Haha, ha, so much fun. We're jumping off the bridge. And I, once I, had, after I jump off, I'm swimming in the river. And I'm thinking like, oh yeah, my wallet's just like sitting by my clothes on the riverbank. But I, like my hat was, Jesus Christ. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. Give me kill there, god damn. Jesus, man. Whew. Sorry, I'm a little... That was scary. Shit. Jesus, this road is fucking crazy, dude. Did you guys see those holes in the road? It was like, uh, you know, I'm gonna let this guy pass. Go around me, go around me. Got people trying to hit me from the front, hit me from the back. God damn, Slovakia. So anyways, <sighs> sorry. I think they kind of, that was jarring. All right. <sighs> so the first thing to say is we suck your dick, <laughs> we suck your dick. And I'm like, ah, no, no, I'm okay, I'm okay. And, and then we're hanging out and a little later they asked me for money. They're like, oh, can you buy us liquor or can you give us some money to buy liquor? And just the whole vibe of these girls was off, dude. Like they want to fuck me immediately. They want some money. And then I, their friend turns to me and they're like, oh yeah, like they're serious. Like if you pay them, like they'll fuck you. And I was like, what? And I, I honestly didn't believe it. Like they're prostitutes. Just the way they did it, it was like so immediate. Like we suck your dick. You pay us, you get us alcohol. I was like, wait. I was like, you can't be serious. And he's like, no, no, no. The guy that spoke English was like, yeah, they're serious. They're prostitutes, they'll, they'll fuck you. And I'm like, all right, that's cool, I guess. And whatever, we proceed to get drunk. And then I realize, I realize my wallet's on the riverbank. And I think nothing of it. I'm a pretty trusting person. I'm drunk at this point, I'm busy, whatever. And um, everything was fine. I just went home. It was all good. And then I looked at my wallet and all my cards were like shuffled around. And I, I don't know about you guys. I always put my credit card the same way back in my wallet. So when it was like upside down and backwards, I knew someone had been in there. You know what I mean? And just the way these girls were acting, their demeanor. They want to fuck me for money. They really need money, this and this. I'm like, okay, let me go check my, my bank statement. And sure enough, someone had spent like $20 on some website, some French website I've never seen before, and $100 on Airbnb. 
And so I got one of the girl's numbers and I texted her and I was like, hey, how's the Airbnb that I got you? <laughs> and she's like, oh, I have no idea what you're talking about, blah, 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 some bullshit. But I knew they had done that, dude. Like, I mean, I even went on my, my um, email and checked Airbnb receipts and there was nothing like from my account. So it's not like I've been charged for breaking a rule or, or something, you know what I mean? It wasn't on my end. So they had went in Airbnb and they had helped themselves to a hundred dollar room for the night. And also $20 worth of whatever. I don't know what website it was. And oddly enough, I got banned from Airbnb. I got, I tried to like, you know, obviously traveling, I'm trying to book places and I got locked out of my account. And I'm banned, my account was deleted. And they don't tell me why. <clears throat> I've requested like another answer. I've requested them tell me why I'm banned, but it's gonna be a few days, so I'm not sure. But for now, I'm almost certain it was the French prostitutes. They must have done something, I don't know, something sneaky. I didn't think they got in my account. Maybe they did, I don't know, because they had been fucking with my uh, ID in there too. Look, I don't know, I'm not fucking Sherlock Holmes. But something went awry. They stole my money, they got an Airbnb, and then a few days later I'm banned from Airbnb. It's like, there's probably something related there. So, no longer on Airbnb. I'm out 120 bucks. No, I think my bank is gonna like give me the money back, but still. Felt a little violated. The French prostitutes violated my trust. Hello. No, no, that's a hard rejection. Okay. Well, guys, I just wanted to check in with you, let you know how I've been doing. I know, like, when I'm vlogging, I can't show you everything, but it, so I just wanted to share a few stories with y'all and uh, show you a near-death experience, apparently, on my motorbike. All right, guys, that's all I got. I will see you sometime somewhere else, uh, probably Poland, in the mountains. All right, guys, peace. Thanks for coming along, listening, watching, whatever. Oh, if you're not already, subscribe to my podcast on, what's it called? Spotify, Off the McBeaten Path. If you enjoyed this, I think you'll enjoy other stories I got, other, other stuff on there. So go check that out, guys. It's on YouTube, it's on Spotify. All right, peace, lads. See you around.